My experience when I used to teach people was that the biggest problem they encountered was the mixing of colours. Now it would be a good idea if you were to prime a piece of cartridge paper and make your own chart. And by that I mean mixing one colour with another and seeing what effect you'd get and making a note of it on this primed piece of cartridge paper. Once you start mixing bits and pieces, you'll have a good idea of what the end result is going to be, so that when you come to paint, it becomes second nature in time. Everything comes with practice, and if you were to make yourself a little chart, it would be a guide forever. I mix my colours anyway on the canvas itself. I do very little mixing on the palette, so I use very little amount of paint, but achieve something quite accurate in using that method. What I want to do today is to show you how to lay out a palette. You will be able to use these colors as I do, mixing them on the canvas uh, to achieve just the right tones. You must remember every action has a reaction and therefore if you do too much mixing, in my opinion, on the palette and think you're going to land it in a spot that has already got some colour on it and achieve the right uh, effect, invariably it's going to be wrong. But if you inch your way gradually in thin veneers of, of colour, changing the, the, the hue, you're more likely to achieve the right effect. The first colour that I put on my palette is Naples Yellow Light. I use Naples Yellow Light as opposed to any of the flake whites or the white whites, you know, they're too chalky. Naples Yellow Light has a bit of yellow in it and that's how I produce white tones. The next one, I use Naples Yellow. This helps with flesh tones. And you notice I don't use a lot of paint, I don't squeeze a lot of paint out on the palette because I use very, very little paint as I go along. Now I'll put a drop of yellow ochre. You'll notice these are all grading of colours. A nice yellow. Now onto orange. These are all parts of flesh tones and part of the underpainting. The cadmium red, again all part of the flesh tones and part of the underpainting. Now I go on to Elysium Crimson. Not too much of that. Indian red. I use it for lining and signing. I always like to have a little bit of grey. This is like a recipe, it's all you need to say. And a pinch of salt. Cerulean blue, very, very useful in flesh tones and skies. I always like to have a bit of sepia. This is used in shadowed, shaded areas and forms part of flesh tones. And now transparent brown, that's a very useful colour for early stages of the work. And the next and last colour that I put on my palette is a blue-black. To help you, I've laid out a comprehensive palette with a nice range of colours. You may be wondering why I've got this piece of plastic, a plastic bag uh, under the palette. It's simply to protect my chair from any accidents or spills or anything of that sort. Well, I paint every day, so when I come back, the palette, the paints are still fresh. If they congeal, all I do is use my little finger and break the uh, seal and use it. And there does come a time when you have to clean your palette, uh, and, and you'll know when you have to do that, when stuff starts getting too messy.
uh, and it's very simple to simply clean your palate.